Intro. Today, we're doing something insane. Uh, forget surviving on an island or giving away a million dollars. I'm putting my own body on the line for science. For the next 30 days, I'm taking creatine, one of the most popular supplements on the planet, to see what actually happens. Is it just hype, or does this stuff really work? We're going to find out. Chapter 1 All right, day one. I just took my first dose of creatine. Something happens almost immediately. It's not a burst of energy. You don't suddenly get bigger muscles. No, it's more scientific and a little strange. Creatine is like a magnet for water. It doesn't just make you thirsty. It starts pulling water from your body. Then it shuttles that water directly into your muscle cells. This is called intracellular water retention. Think of your muscles as tiny water balloons. Before creatine, normal. After creatine, slightly inflated. That inflation can show up on the scale overnight, often a one to three pound jump in the first days. This is the first test. Can you handle the scale going up first? It's a mind game. Important, this isn't fat. You are not getting fatter. This water weight actually helps you. Initial hydration is step one in the whole process. It sets the stage for performance benefits later. So if the scale is higher tomorrow, don't freak out. It means creatine has entered the building and is working. The immediate change isn't mirror deep. It's cellular. It's the foundation for everything else. My starting weight is logged, dose taken. Now we wait. The first 24 hours are all about hidden water shifting. Honestly, it feels weird. Muscles filling up with water. That's the science. Let's see the scale tomorrow morning. This is going to be wild. Chapter 2 Okay, we need to talk about a side effect that can hit you right at the start. For the first few days, some people, including me, can experience some, let's call it digestive distress, stomach cramps, feeling bloated, a general sense of gut discomfort. This is one of the biggest reasons people quit creatine early. They take a big dose, their stomach rebels, and they think, this isn't for me. But there's a simple reason this happens. Dumping a large amount of creatine powder at once can draw water into your intestines, not just your muscles. That creates the sloshy, bloated feeling. It's common during a loading phase, like 20 grams a day. It's a shock to the system. I felt this on day two. Not pleasant. But here's the secret fix. Be smarter than the supplement. First, split your dose. Take two and a half grams in the morning and two and a half grams in the afternoon. That gives your system more time to process it without getting overwhelmed. Second trick, always, and I mean always, take it with a meal and with plenty of water. That slows absorption and buffers the effect on your stomach. Once I split it and took it with breakfast, the stomach issues completely disappeared. It was a night and day difference. So if your stomach feels off, don't quit. Just adjust your strategy. It's a simple problem with a simple solution. This is a critical hurdle to overcome in the first few days. Push through the initial discomfort to get to the good stuff. The challenge isn't just physical. It's about being smart with how you use it. Chapter 3 This is where things start to get interesting. By the end of the first week, something visible began to happen. When I looked in the mirror, my muscles genuinely looked fuller. It's a subtle effect, but it's definitely there. This isn't muscle growth. Not yet. This is that water retention we talked about on day one. Now it's changing how your muscles appear. They look more pumped. They look more defined, even when you're just resting. This is the cosmetic effect of creatine that gets a lot of people hooked. You haven't necessarily gotten any stronger yet, but you look like you have. The scale confirmed it too. By day seven, my weight was up about two and a half pounds and holding steady. It's still almost entirely water. Your muscle cells are now fully saturated. Muscle fullness, activated. It's a huge psychological boost. However, this is also where you need to be careful. Seeing the scale fluctuate can be confusing. One day you might be up three pounds, the next day up two. This is your body balancing new water levels. 
Don't let daily weigh-ins mess with your head. Look at the trend over the week, not one morning. Chapter 4 Week 2 is when the magic really starts to happen inside your muscles. All that creatine you've been taking has been building up, creating a bigger and bigger stockpile inside your muscle cells. This stockpile is called phosphocreatine. Now why is this important? Because phosphocreatine is rocket fuel for your muscles. It's what your body uses to rapidly regenerate its main energy source, ATP, during short, explosive movements. Think of it like this. Your muscles have a tiny, tiny battery. ATP, for high-intensity work. Lifting a heavy weight. Sprinting. This battery runs out in just a few seconds. Before, your body would have to slow down to recharge it. But now, with all this extra phosphocreatine stored up, it's like you have a supercharger. Your body can refuel that ATP battery almost instantly, allowing you to push harder for just a little bit longer. This is where I started to feel the first real performance benefits. It wasn't like I could suddenly lift twice as much weight. The change was more subtle. On my bench press, maybe I could squeeze out one extra rep on my heaviest set. More reps, it's Satcher, more gains. When I was doing sprints, I felt like I could hold my top speed for a second longer before gassing out. It's a small improvement, but it's a big deal. That one extra rep is what triggers muscle growth. So, in the second week, the focus shifts from water weight to actual power output. Your muscle endurance for short bursts of effort is noticeably better. Box jumps, kettlebell swings, short sprints. You're not going to be running marathons faster, but you'll feel more explosive in the gym. This is the first measurable sign that the creatine is enhancing your training capacity. It's an awesome feeling when you hit a set and realize you have a little more in the tank than you did last week. The gains are starting. Chapter 5 If week 2 was the spark, week 3 was the explosion. The pieces of the puzzle come together and you see measurable, undeniable strength gains. Fully saturated creatine stores plus two weeks of consistent, enhanced training produces a powerful cumulative effect. It's not just feeling like you have one extra rep, it's actually adding more weight to the bar. For me, this was the most exciting week. I went to test my big lifts, squat bench press deadlift. I added 10 pounds to my squat working sets for the same reps. That might not sound like a ton, but for serious lifters, that's a big jump in weeks. The strength wasn't in my head, it was moving more weight. Scientific studies back this up. Research shows creatine with resistance training leads to strength gains roughly 5 to 15% more than training alone. It's not a magic pill. It amplifies the work you're already doing. It's an accelerator for progress. This is the payoff. After the initial water retention and stomach weirdness, you are now officially stronger. More reps, heavier weight a stronger stimulus for muscle growth. Week 3 is the turning point. Creatine stops being potential and starts delivering. The progress felt incredible. By the time I hit week 4, a new, incredible benefit started to emerge. My recovery was insane. This isn't just about being able to push harder during a single set. How I felt between sets and how I felt the day after a hard workout. Normally, after a heavy leg day, I'd be sore and sluggish for at least 48 hours. But now, the muscle soreness was noticeably less intense, and it went away faster. Here's the science behind it. Creatine helps with energy production, reduces muscle cell damage, reduces inflammation from intense exercise. This means your muscles can repair themselves more efficiently. In the gym, this translated to shorter rest times. I found myself ready for my next set much quicker than usual. I felt less gassed out, which let me keep intensity high the whole workout. This improved recovery has a massive downstream effect. Because I was recovering faster between sessions, I could increase my total weekly training volume. I could hit legs hard on Monday and feel fresh enough to train them again later in the week. This ability to handle more work is the absolute key to long-term progress. It's the definition of progressive overload.
In the final week of the 30 days, the benefit shifted to endurance and recovery. I wasn't just stronger for my first set, I was stronger for my last set, too. I was less broken down the next day, so I could come back sooner. This creates a powerful cycle. Better recovery, more training volume, faster strength and muscle gains. It's a game changer for consistency. This is the part of the experiment that blew my mind the most. This is the part of the experiment that blew my mind the most. This is the part of the experiment that blew my mind the most. We all know creatine is for muscles, right? But some of the most fascinating new research is looking at its effects on the brain. Your brain uses a massive amount of energy. It also uses the ATP phosphocreatine system. So, the theory is, if you saturate your body with creatine, your brain gets a performance boost too. Now, it's important to say the evidence here is still emerging. It's not as rock solid as the data on strength gains. However, some studies, particularly in populations with possibly compromised creatine levels, have shown modest improvements. Vegetarians the elderly. We're talking about things like short-term memory reasoning skills, mental processing speed. It's like giving your brain a little extra RAM to work with. Did I feel like Albert Einstein? No but I did notice some subtle effects. I felt a bit sharper, especially during the afternoon when I'd normally feel a slump. My focus during long editing sessions seemed more sustained. It's hard to separate this from a placebo effect, but given the biology, it's plausible creatine contributed to better mental energy and endurance, like with muscles. This is a super exciting frontier for creatine research. Beyond gym strength, it might help you think a bit better and feel more mentally energized. Some research even hints at mood-stabilizing effects because of its role in brain energy metabolism. While you shouldn't take creatine purely as a brain booster yet, it's an incredible potential side benefit that makes this supplement even more compelling. It's not just for your body, it's for your brain too. 30 days later, here we are. We've gone through the entire journey. Time to summarize the results. So, what actually happened? First, the scale. I gained three pounds. Most of that was water weight inside the muscle. It gives a fuller look. It's predictable and harmless. Don't fear the scale. Second, performance. Undeniable results. Week two, more power and extra reps on high intensity sets. Week 3, measurable strength gains. Lifting heavier for the same reps, the gold standard. The strength and power claims are 100% true. It works. Third, recovery. Biggest surprise. By week 4, my between set and between workout recovery improved dramatically. Less soreness, higher training volume. That creates a feedback loop for more gains. Cognitive effects. I felt mentally sharper. What's next? Keep taking creatine, switch to maintenance. 3 to 5 grams per day. No need to cycle or reload. Keep a small daily dose to stay saturated. If you have any health concerns, talk to your doctor. For me, the results speak for themselves. Plus 3 LBS, water. Plus 10 LBs on squat. Faster recovery improved focus. The verdict, it works. So there you have it. 30 days of creatine, documented every step of the way. The initial water weight gain, the real strength improvements, the insane recovery benefits, and even touched on the potential brain-boosting effects. It's not a magic pill, but it's one of the most proven, effective, and cheapest supplements on the market for anyone looking to get stronger and improve their performance in the gym. The hype is real. You have to get through the first week to see the benefits. This experiment was a huge success. I hope this detailed breakdown helps you make your own decision. We cut through all the myths and just focused on what the science says and what my actual experience was. The results were better than I even expected. For just a few cents a day, the return on investment in terms of strength and recovery is absolutely massive. I'm definitely keeping it in my daily routine. That's the 30-day evidence-first snapshot. If you want sources, a dosing guide, or a 60-day follow-up, 
Comment below and subscribe. Your feedback literally determines what crazy experiment we do next. And remember, this is my personal experience. Always consult a doctor for personal medical advice before starting any new supplement. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.